Hey guys, it's nice to be here. I tell you what, it's been since January since I've been able to teach uh, the fourth through sixth grade classes. So I know uh, things have changed for you guys. I pray that uh, life will uh, change here soon. We get back to teaching Sunday school classes and and uh, we get to have fun playing games. We get to have fun listening to God's word and, and understanding how God is working in our life. I did want to mention for last week, I guess um, Samuel receives a word from the God from God, and it comes to bring down Eli and his two sons because they didn't believe and place trust in God. <clears throat> and as Samuel moves forward, he does moves forward and, and, and expresses the word that God has given him. And uh, ultimately, Eli and his sons die and Samuel moves forward. So today we're going to work on uh, Lesson 53, which is the God of Israel cannot be captured. And if you ever remember, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord uh, was memories and things that God had, had done and that the Israelites could remember. But I want you to understand that, and you'll see as we go through the class here, that <clears throat> those are items of God that was not where God was. So <clears throat> I want to start reading through. I'm in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 7, I believe. And I will read that. Now the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it to Ebenezer, to As Asad. And then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it to the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon, who was one of their gods. And when the Asdites... Uh, rose early the next morning. Behold, as I had, or Dag Dagon had fallen on on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and they set him in place again. But when they rose early the next morning, behold, Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord, and the head of Dagon and both the palm of his hands were cut off on the threshold. Only the tr trunk of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither the priest of Dagon nor all who entered Dagon's house <coughs> tread on the th threshold of Dagon and Asher to this day. Now the head, hand of the Lord was heavy on the Ash Ashdodites, and he, he reven ravaged them to, and smote them with their, with their tumors, both the Ashdodites and, and its territories. When the men of the Ashdodites Ash saw that it was so. They said, The ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is severe on us and on Dagon our God. So that's verse, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 5, 1 through 7. The uh, Philistines realize that God had more power over their God. When you cut their head off and hands off, it was a good understanding that it was not going to, uh, you did not live. And it says at the end that the, the, excuse me, the Philistines had made a decision to send it back. And we'll talk about it a little bit, a little bit later. But I'm also going to read the Gospel Story <clears throat> uh, Bible. And that's again chapter, story 53. And it says, Sometime after Samuel told Eli that God would judge him and his sons, Israel went to war against the Philistines. Instead of asking the Lord for help, <clears throat> they went into the battle in their own strength, and Israel lost the battle, and 4,000 men died. The elders could not understand why they lost. To make sure they won the next battle, they took the Ark of God with them, and Hophni and Phinehas were glad <clears throat> to follow along. The problem was that everyone treated the Ark as as though it had a secret power of its own, like a good luck charm. Again, <clears throat> they went in the battle without asking the Lord for help, and they lost. This time, even more people died, and Hophni and Phinehas, that's Eli's son, sons, were killed, and the Ark of the God was captured. And when Eli heard this terrible news, he fell over, broke his neck, and died. The Philistines treated the captured Ark Ark <clears throat> like one of their own the gods and put it in their temple with their god Dagon. And the next morning they found the statue of Dagon knocked to the ground. 
faces in front of the ark of God. And the Philistines stood Dagon back up, and the next morning Dagon was on the ground again. This time his head and arms were broken off too. And after that, the people of the city became very sick. So they sent the ark away from their place, but no matter where they sent it, the people became very sick. In desperation, the Philistines asked their priest for help. And the priest told them to return to the ark uh, to Israel. So they put the ark on a cart pulled by two cows and sent the cart away. And even without a driver, the cows carried the ark straight back to Israel. And when the people of Israel saw the ark returning, they rejoiced. And the Levites unloaded the ark, broke apart the cart, and sacrificed the cows as burnt offerings to the Lord. But some men who looked upon the ark were, were struck down and killed because the ark of God was holy. The others said, Who is able to stand before the Lord, this holy God? Then even the Israelites sent the ark away to another town. And when Samuel learned about the ark, he commanded the people to put away his false gods and turn their hearts to the Lord. And Samuel sacrificed a lamb for the people's sin and called out to the Lord for Israel. And when Israel was gathered for the offering, the Philistines came in a surprise attack. But the Lord heard Samuel's prayers and defeated the Philistines with a mighty thunderous sound that sent them into confusion for that day on during Samuel's rules Israel had peace with the Philistines do you know why God knocked over the statue of Dagon I, I didn't the ark represented God's presence and the idol to God to Dagon represented the false worship of the Philistines no false god would be allowed to stand before the Lord God, so God himself tore down the, Israel, the Philistines' idol. Sin cannot stand in God's presence. That is why the cross is so important for us. As sins, we cannot live in the presence of, excuse me, as sinners, we cannot live in the presence of a holy God. We need our sins taken away. That is what Jesus did for us on the cross. He took the punishment for our sins so we could not be for so we could be forgiven once we were forgiven we can enter God's presence without fear so those are the two uh, that's the first Samuel 5 and the gospel story Bible information I, I wanted you to understand what's going on but one of the things that I was going to do uh, before I kind of went through some teaching points with some of the lessons was to give you an idea <clears throat> of like a, a um, let's see, what do they call it? Um, a uh, object lesson was to get a, <clears throat> a um, let's see, to get a popcorn popper and turn it on and let it go. And you know, you're expecting the popcorn to, to pop and put it and put a bucket underneath and fill it up. And brrr, it's going, going, where's going? and nothing is coming out. <laughs> Why not? Why is that not coming out? Probably because I forgot to put popcorn in it to make it work. And the object lesson talks about this is that, you know, I, I'm asking you, what was I missing? I was missing the popcorn in the popcorn maker. And, I was, and when you don't have popcorn in there, nothing's gonna come out. <clears throat> so, what I want you to understand what Israel was missing. They took the ark that got into the battle, but they didn't ask God to come with the ark. They thought the ark was God. And what the ark was, was remembrance of God and, and history of what had gone on. And they needed to ask, just like Eli and his two sons, <clears throat> they needed to ask for God to come. The ark of the God without presence of God would not help them defeat the Philistines at all. So in our life, just like we talked about in the gospel uh, area, is that we placed our faith in, in Christ. And he has done on our behalf many things that saves our physical life, but also saves our eternal life to be with Christ. We thank him for that. And I'm going to put on hold for a minute and add one more thing.
Okay, we're back at it, guys. We finished um, uh, 1 Samuel 5, 1 through 7. We looked at the Gospel um, gospel Story Bible, and we kind of went through an object lesson. It didn't do the greatest, but uh, again, my expectation was uh, exactly what the people of Philistines uh, won the Ark of the Covenant because the Israelites were planning on... Uh, placing their trust in this ark as opposed to God. And I was planning on tracing, placing my trace or trust on my air, pour, air popcorn maker rather than sticking popcorn in it to make it popcorn. So <clears throat> I, wanted, I wanted to finish uh, the lesson with some of the teaching points. So the first one is the power lies not in objects, but only in God. So like the... Israelites were thinking the power was this Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And those were items. Those were not, that was not the power that um, made it for them. But the Lord was where the power was going to be at. And they were not placing trust or faith in that. The second one is God demonstrates his mercy in the midst of Israel's defeat. Even though the nation of Israel was making poor decisions, poor thoughts, the Lord still remained faithful to his people and still judged the Philistines. He, when Dagon got it and it cut his head off and arms off, they knew that God was not very powerful. <clears throat> and, um, and so God demonstrated his mercy even to the Israelites, even though they did the wrong thing, and <clears throat> uh, sent the Ark of the Covenant back from the Philistines to Israel and then God brings the ark home and and during that time um, <clears throat> the ark has been taken from Israel for a while but it, it never it was never out of God's control God's can you imagine the Philistines so frustrated so sad so challenged that they wanted to get this ark of the covenant out of there and they put two cows and a trailer on it and somehow the cows make it exactly back to where Israel wants it to be and that's God's plan in moving it there and God's faithful in that area um, again I wanted to f finish uh, class with a prayer and I pray that each one of you and your family members will continue to stay healthy um, and we'll be able to get back to school. We'll be able to get back to Sunday school and enjoy our times, not only in, in our scripture and our classes, but also as we move forward uh, in playing games and building that relationship that we had with one another. So again, I'm gonna pray and we'll move forward. Lord, we're thankful for this day. We pray that uh, you'll give um, our church members their families, our uh, neighbors, friends, uh, health, and that whatever is going on with this coronavirus, Lord, that we might honor you in all that we do. And Lord, that we might place an honor in you that we would focus in that way. Lord, we thank you for that. We look forward to, are thankful for our church coming back in, in the session. And we look forward to our school, Sunday school class coming back. Or in your name pray. Amen. Hey guys, have a great day. We look forward to times changing and we'll see you later. Bye.